Hey, the Horsepower Shop is open for business, and we're glad you came in. Today's show is all about new and old benchmarks in GM high performance. Well, first, the old. Back in the mid 60s, the 427 Big Block set a horsepower high water mark when it was introduced in the second generation Corvette. Since then, they've dropped them into GM muscle cars like Chevelle's and Acadian Beaumonts. Oh, you're not up on your Beaumonts? Well, this one belongs to Nick Hedgecoth, and it's a 64 model that they only made for a couple of years to sell in Pontiac dealerships in Canada, eh? It's got a Chevelle body just like a Malibu's, but the trim is unique to the car. Tail lights look like they were transplanted from a Pontiac, a grill that really resembles a GTO's, and an interior that's all Le Mans except for the Chevelle shifter and console. With a 430 horse 427 under the hood, this thing was no doubt a Canadian Cobra killer in its day. Yeah, the 427 big block was a killer motor back in its day, but these days you can get the same displacement, a lot more power in a smaller package. And here's where you start. It's the new LSX Bowtie Iron Block, one of the best things that GM Performance Parts has come up with in years. Now here's a cutaway of one that shows you the extra thick deck, the Siamese bores, and that true priority main oiling. Plus there are other features we'll show you later. Today we're going to break some new ground on horsepower. By using this block and all those parts, we're going to build our own LSX engine. One we'll put to the test a little later on back on the engine dyno. But first, we're going to experience how some heads up racers are using this block to build some big horsepower race engines. Welcome to Memphis Motorsports Park, where this weekend's NMCA drag racing event features a one of a kind quarter mile race within the race. It's the inaugural LSX shootout. Here's a question for you. How's building a race motor a lot like building a house? Well, don't ask me. Let's ask the professor. If you're going to put up a building, you better get the foundation right. We got the foundation. Now it's time to start putting all the decorations on it. The foundation that Warren Johnson refers to is the hot new LSX block, the one he helped develop for GM Performance Parts. It's now a race-proven platform used by many of the shootout cars, especially in the fastest drag radio class. The LSX block has helped us out a lot. It seals up real good, problems that we always had with the aluminum block. You know, it's fascinating to see the combinations racers are using to build up their LS blocks with power adders like nitrous, or in the case of Bill Maloney's Corvette, a turbocharger that works well with his LS ported racing heads. GM really hit a home run with this block. Uh, the heads are awesome. You know, with very little work, you get these heads to flow way over 300. These flow close to four. Yeah. Um, you know, those are big block numbers. It reminds me of uh, being a part of the GM family back in the late 1960s when every word was high performance. Of course, new age high performance doesn't necessarily make racing easy. Just ask the Michigan team behind this 2000 Camaro. I put it in the wall at Norwalk uh, just a couple days ago at about 150 miles an hour in the wall. And uh, from that point, it's been nonstop thrash. I'd say the scariest part was the frame because I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. I thought maybe the car was scrapped. And when we uh, got it to the, to the alignment shop and we were able to straighten the frame out, that was probably the biggest relief. We were most concerned of the car being fixable. Camp ran a qualifying run of 785 at 185 miles an hour, second only to Steve Turley, who led the pack with a 779 in his 98 Camaro. Steve's foundation is an LS2 block that he modified to handle the abuse of heads up racing. It's got a fifth hole along the bottom of the bores to allow us to clamp the head of the block better, which should hopefully be able to keep more of the power in the engine instead of leaking it out. And he also came up with some cool mods inside the car too. With the bone stock shifter that's been uh, notched and stopped for, for racing shifting, I just uh, put it in drive, slap it for second, and then push the button for third, and that's pretty much it. Now this is our intercooler tank. It's uh, basically a stock aluminum turkey seat that we fabbed up to put our water and our ice in. Uh, it's also got our air-to-air -air transmission cooler inside. And uh, it's got my overflow tanks mounted to the back. <laughs> On Sunday, Eliminations Day, the regular NMCA class cars battled it out for spots in the final. But the LSX shootout rounds created their own brand of excitement. 
especially those drag radio contenders. Top qualifier Curly had trouble on the line in round two against Paul Major. But Kemp, the comeback kid from Michigan, battled his way to a final run. As did Major in his 0-1 bet running consistently in the high seven. Well, in the finals, it was Kemp cutting a near perfect light, winning over Major by two hundredths of a second. When I pulled up in the staging lanes, I was telling Steve, you know, it's like a dream. I don't feel like I'm here right now. I shouldn't be here, I don't know how I'm here. I feel like this just isn't right. And when I came back at the end of the lane, it's all real. <laughs> it's all real. A real and amazing comeback win in the first ever LSX shootout. Hey, welcome back to Horsepower, where the buildup of our LSX is about to begin. Now, no doubt this iron bow tie block's going to be around for a long time to come, whether it's a foundation for a stout streeter or a full-blown race car. Now, the block comes from the factory with a 3990 bore, and once you get your new block bored and honed to 4.125, you'll have those 427 cubic inches. After that, you're ready to fill it with parts that fit your budget and power plans. Most of the ones we picked are the same you'll find in an LS7, like this forged steel four inch stroke crankshaft with a 58 tooth reluctor wheel. Then after we lube up the bearings, we can drop on these heavy duty main caps that use six fasteners, counting the ones on the sides. Are you ready to give it a whack, buddy? Yep. Then we torque them to specs from the center out. The strength and light weight of our piston rod combination are going to be critical keys to make it power that motor. These rods are forged titanium that measure just over six inches. Now we stepped up to these forged molly pistons that have a graffle coating on them that's all about reducing friction. Now when we say these are lightweight, we mean lightweight. Check this out. Here's a typical aluminum piston hanging on an H-beam rod. It weighs in at 1,371 grams. Now, Here's ours that tips the scales at 1082, almost a 300 gram difference. With the rings in place, we can install the pistons and rods, drop the rod caps in place and torque them down. Next is the camshaft, which is an LS stage three. Now it's got a duration of 233 on the intake, 276 on the exhaust at 50 thousandths. Now the max lift is 595 on both the intake and exhaust, and that's set up with a 1.7 rocker arm. Now we install this LSX cam plate, and with the timing chain in place, the oil pump goes on next. Then we spin the motor over to drop in the windage tray, followed by the oil pump pickup. Now with the front and rear covers bolted up, we can finish up the bottom end with this aluminum oil pan. Now this block will accept any LS series oil pump or oil pan combination, plus the block accommodates either wet or dry sump oil systems. We're using aluminum LS7 heads to build our 427. They come with CNC ports and chambers. And we got ours fully assembled with these 220 titanium intake valves, 160 sodium filled exhaust valves, and combustion chambers measure 70 cc's. Now we're looking at a combustion ratio of just over 11 half to one. But before we install these, remember it's an LS block, the lifter's gotta go in first. And like all LS motors, the lifters stay captured inside plastic retainers so you don't even have to remove them during a cam swap. The heads go on over a set of three layer gaskets and they're held in place with ARP studs. Next, we bolt up the cam position sensor and bracket, the balancer, followed by the water pump. Then we go on top to drop in the push rods. Next, a set of LS7 rocker arms, and notice how the intake rocker arm is offset to properly match up with the valve stem. Now we can drop on this valley cover, bolt up the valve covers, and install a pair of LS coil pack assemblies. Finally, we're ready for some induction. Now we could go with this fuel injection setup, but since we're in the business of making horsepower, we're gonna try out this new LS7 carbureted intake that's race ready right out of the box and accepts any 4150 style carburetor. 
which in this case is going to be a double pumper 850. We'll run some 93 octane fuel through. Well, with that, we're ready to roll this LSX 427 back into the dyno cell, wire up the ignition, and see if this new small block lives up to all the hype. Yep, the LSX's dyno debut, and hey, I bet this thing's going to make at least 650 horse back on the pump. That would be living up to the hype, I yeah, tell you. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Hey, we're back with you. Now at the horsepower dyno, we're, we're about to see how much horsepower we can get out of this LSX 427. Of course, the project all started with a solid foundation, one of the hottest and most bulletproof blocks to come out of GM performance parts. Our LSX iron block was filled with a forged steel crank, heavy duty mains that use six fasteners, and molly forged pistons hanging on titanium rods. We stuffed in a stage three hydraulic roller camshaft and bolted up a pair of LS7 aluminum heads. Our intake manifold is a new LS7 single plane fed by an 850 CFM double pumper carb. Now, although this is the first time an LSX has been tested on TV, I'm almost willing to bet money this thing makes at least 650 horsepower or more. After loading the motor up on the dyno cart, we gave it this ignition source, an MSD 6LS controller, which is perfect for carbureted LSs with connections to the map sensor, the coil packs, up front, the cam position sensor, and out back, the crank sensor. And to get some spark to the plugs, these Taylor Thunderbolt wires that are 8.2 millimeters with 50 ohms of resistance per foot. Well, I'm ready to hear some noise out of this thing, are you? Six hundred and forty-two horsepower, not six fifty, but hey, it's really close. And check this out: five hundred and sixty-three foot-pounds of torque. Before we call it quits, though, let's see what happens when we add a one-inch spacer, which can increase the air velocity, keep the carburetor cooler, and should increase the horsepower and torque. Look at that, the spacer picked us up 18 horsepower for a total of 660. The torque's up eight for a total of 570. Well, I'm glad I didn't take him up on that bet. By the way, this is just one parts combination you can use on this new LSX block, which sells for about 1900 bucks. By the way, GM Performance Parts has come up with a cool way for you to do an online virtual engine build with other parts combinations, and you could even conduct your own virtual dyno test. All right, we've got a horsepower reunion with an LSX-powered former project car coming right up. You're watching Horsepower. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Horsepower collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. We couldn't do a show about the new LSX without including our old friend, the 69 Nova, a popular project race car now driven by Robin Lawrence in the NMCA. But you know, we can't help seeing it the way it used to look back when its home was a horsepower shop. We bought it black and bone stock before it was back half and powered with a GM Performance Parts 572. It eventually was ape wrapped and became one of our most famous project cars and not a bad performer out on the strip. Yeah, but not quite enough for Robin's plans when he got the keys to it. He not only swapped out the chassis, suspension, and interior, he took out the 572, put in an LSX block, added some ported C5R heads, a sheet metal intake from Hughes, and a pair of 1150 Hollies with nitrous. Got to tell you, it was a kick seeing this thing in its new life as a star of the LSX shootout. When Robin Lawrence took the supernova from a bracket car to a nostalgia pro street racer, it was a groundbreaking endeavor. Now the trick is to get the car down the track to compete in the class, usually mid to high sevens. Small blocks aren't really uh, uh, sought after in the nostalgia pro street class. It's more of a big block class. 
So it's going to take a lot of uh, a lot of races before that tide changes. But what it does do is it is it really influences or let people know the stability of this type of block if it can if it can hang with with the uh, the, the cars or the engines that are currently in the class. When we had the Nova, it had an automatic transmission, but here's how Robin uses his new five-speed Linko to do a burnout, starting in second gear. I bring the engine up to about 3,000 RPM, I snap the clutch, I, I mat the throttle, and as soon as I see the RPMs come up, I basically shift to third, shift to fourth, shift to fifth, let off, off, off on the button, continue to keep my foot down on the pedal, steer the car out past the starting line, stab the clutch, let the Liberty go back to neutral. Well, Robin's all set for some full-blown passes here in Memphis. But first, I just had to sit in our old car's new seat and try out that shifter. See why you like it. All right. Ain't nothing like the old Nova. Finally, a long-awaited moment for race fans and us horsepower guys, too. Robin's debut passes were only in the mid to high eights, but that's a good start. And for us at Horsepower, a pretty good finish for the Project Supernova. Here's a way to wake up your LS1 engine from Wyan. It's a John Lingenfelter signature aluminum intake manifold. Now its beefy design leaves you plenty of room for porting and it accepts all the factory LS1 components. Now it'll handle the pressures of blower, nitrous or turbos and it comes with all the necessary hardware to install it. You can get it in either a satin or polished finish. Prices start at 560 bucks. Earlier today we made 660 horsepower with that LSX 427 back in the dyno. And that wouldn't have been possible without a good set of headers to efficiently remove all the exhaust from the cylinders. Now for that, we turned to Doug's for these long tube headers made especially for LS motors inside 67 to 69 F bodies. Now like all their headers, they're designed and tested inside the vehicles that are supposed to fit. And you can get yours in a plain finish or this metallic ceramic finish with prices starting at under 550 bucks. Well, this week it was an LSX 427. Next week we'll build something else to make power. See you then.